the ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we are going to discuss the topic of respiratory acidosis in the EM Rapid 2023 session. Okay, myself, Dr. Naveen, is going to talk about respiratory acidosis. Respiratory acidosis, respiratory acid-base disorders are those disorders in the acid-base equilibrium of the body which involves the PCO2 component. In the acid base uh, balance in the body, the pH is determined with the 6.1 plus log of HCO3 by 0 0.03 into PCO2, in which the component involving PCO2 disorders will be causing the respiratory acid base disorders. And the respiratory acidosis itself is the acid base disturbance in which there is an increase in the PCO2 level. The PCO2 level in the body is determined with the factor of the carbon dioxide protection, production and the rate of the alveolar ventilation. We can define mathematically like PaCO2 is equal to one constant K into VCO2 that is the ventilation uh, of carbon dioxide production divided by the wind by the alveolar ventilation rate. Yeah. So when this PaCO2 is increased in the body that causes the respiratory acidosis. The increase in this arterial PaCO2 can occur by the following mechanisms. First there can be the increase excess of CO2 in the inspired gas itself. Or the second, there is a decrease in the alveolar ventilation, the rate at which the lung is excreting the carbon dioxide and otherwise there is an increased production of CO2 by the body. Because of these three cases, we can see that there can be an arterial PCO2 raise in the lung. Next, uh, the, because of usually the respiratory acidosis, there can be mostly there will be a decrease in the alveolar ventilation. We can see in this graph that as the PSEO2 is increasing, the alveolar ventilation rate will be decreasing. Overproduction of this carbon dioxide in the lung can be mismatched with the alveolar ventilation because of which there is this hypercapnia. Uh, and because of this increased PSEO2 in the lung, there will be secondary physiological changes in the body which will be trying to restore the acid base equilibrium. That is done uh, like the respiratory uh, acidosis because of the increased PSO2 will acidify the body fluids. In response to it, the body will be increasing the plasma bicarbonate concentration. And these increments in the plasma bicarbonate concentration is an integral part of the respiratory acidosis as a compensatory mechanism. In the respiratory acidosis, we can define it like uh, as acute and chronic. In acute respiratory acidosis, the PSEO2 value is seen elevated above the normal range of 45 and there will be acidosis that means pH less than 7.35 and there will be a difficult in ventilation, abrupt failure of ventilation is present. In chronic respiratory acidosis, PSEO2 is also elevated above this uh, 7.45 and the, but here the pH will be near normal, there will be no uh, such a high increase, uh, decrease in the pH as in the acute condition. And in this chronic case, we can see there is an elevated serum bicarbonate that is more than 30. So we can uh, broadly say there is an acute or chronic depending upon the three values of pH, PCO2 and bicarbonate. In acute, the pH would be low and the PCO2 would be high. Along with that, there will be a uh, compensating of the bicarb. But in chronic, the bicarb will be, will be adjusted to the chronicity of the increased PSEO2, it will be more than 30. Next, coming to the adaptations. In the acute condition, how will the body adapt? In acute condition, there will be within 10 to 5 to 10 minutes from the onset of the hypercapnia itself, there will be a buffering of the bicarb. Here, the uh, bicarb, uh, in acute condition, the compensation will be like, for every 1 mm Hg increase in PSO2, 0.1 of HCO3 should be increasing. Or we can easily say that for every 10 mm of PSO2, there will be increase in 1 milli equivalent per liter of bicarb. This is the compensation formula for the acute condition, acute respiratory acidosis. And in chronic adaptation, the time duration will be 3 to 5 days. Here, what happens is that the, because of the constant chronic PSEO2 increase, the kidney in the kidney in the distal segment of the nephron, there will be a transient increase in the urinary net acid secretion and persistent increase in the rate of renal bicarbonate absorption. Because of which, there will be a more higher value of bicarb in the blood. 
here the compensation formula would be for every uh, 10 mm hg of psco2 3 milli equivalents of bicarb And furthermore, as the initially the bicarb will be reab being reabsorbed, for the uh, adjustment of the bicarb being reabsorbed, there will be a response of uh, transient increase in chloride excretion to maintain the anion gap, plasma anion gap to remain normal. The bicarb, the increase in the renal uh, bicarb absorption will be compensated by a increase in renal chloride excretion. Next, coming to the causes of this respiratory acidosis, like as we described previously, there is an acute respiratory and chronic respiratory acidosis. So, depending on that causes, in acute, we are expecting an initial within a few moments change, which is involving the airway diseases. It can be like the exacerbations of the pneumonia, asthma, COPD or the airway obstruction as in general and otherwise there will be a CNS involvement central nervous system depression causing reduced ventilation rate. It can be by the recreational drugs or there can be an intracranial hemorrhage, SCH or because of the sedation or some, sometimes the muscles involving the respiration that uh, involved that is neuromuscular disorders like myasthenia gravis. Myasthenia gravis and Gillian Berry syndrome or even the thoracic trauma because of the pneumothorax or flyages, these all causes the acute respiratory acidosis. In chronicity, it can be because of the COPD, long lasting COPD like general COPD, not like the acute exacerbation of it, but the long lasting COPD, ILD and some neuromuscular disease like ALS muscular dystrophy or even the obesity hyperventilation called as a Pickwickian syndrome, even in these conditions, it is a chronic respiratory acidosis which we see there. And next coming to the clinical features, so how is the case of the respiratory acidosis, what are the features which we see in that? It depends upon the increase, how much is the value of the increased PSCO2. The effects are because of the increased PSCO2 mainly and also the respiratory acidosis, the acidosis of the pH component. In neurologically, uh, the neurological uh, signs will be because of the hypercapnic encephalopathy, increased PSCO2, increased PCO2 in the blood causing the encephalopathy. It is uh, clinically seen by the patient being irritable and having headache and also he is in confusion hallucinations or delirium and patient with very high values of this PCO2 they can be even in the narcosis and the narcos, uh, patient is in narcosis, CO2 narcosis leading to coma and the because of the increased ICP there can be a frank papilledema present. This uh, the dependency of the severity of this hypercapnic encephalopathy depends upon the magne uh, quantity of the PCO2 dissolved in the blood and also along with that the acidemia and the accompanying hypoxemia. Coming to the cardiovascular component, because of the acidosis, usually the heart muscles are having decreased myocardial contractibility and because of the increased uh, uh, carbon dioxide, there will be systemic vasodilation. This component of vasodilation is specially seen in the brain, that is cerebral circulation, where it causes vasodilation and increased ICP. And also the increased uh, hypercapnic this acidosis causes beta adrenergic stimulation. Because in mild to moderate cases of hypercapnia, there is usually an increased cardiac output and increased or normal blood pressure and increased cerebral blood flow. This is the kind of response the body shows. But when it comes to when the hypercapnia is severe, highly high, then the hypoxemia is also present because of which there is both decrease in both cardiac output and blood pressure can be seen. So mild to moderate, the cardiac output is uh, increased or normal, BP increased or normal, but in severe, in severe uh, hypercapnia, cardiac output and BP are on reduction, reduced. Next coming to the kidney, renal wise, it's there because of the hypercapnia, there is salt and water retention. This also, this along with the kid, uh, heart's contractibility, both can consistently lead to presence of the core pulmonial causing cardiac failure. 
Now, how do we diagnose? For the diagnosis of respiratory uh, acidosis, the initial requirement would be the ABG analysis having the values of PSAO2 and arterial pH. These both are the basic requirement to diagnose the uh, respiratory acidosis. Uh, coming to the next component would be having the detailed history and physical examination, uh, like the examination mainly involving the uh, respiratory system and the detailed history regarding the uh, lung pathology involved. And furtherly, the test which we can do is the pulmonary function studies uh, with, by which we can know the lung volumes and the arterial PCO2 and oxygen saturation. Uh, if for a non-pulmonary causes, we want to know see the drug history and even the neurological involvement of the respiratory muscles involved. The arterial findings, the basic arterial findings in the respiratory acidosis would be PCO2 should always be raised. That would be the reason, the basic reason where criteria for the respiratory acidosis. In acute respiratory acidosis, pH is low and bicarb is high. Or high normal or slightly raised because regarding uh, in respect to the compensatory changes. In acute compensatory would be 10 PCO2, uh, for every 10 PCO2, 1 milli equivalent of uh, bicarb. And in chronic respiratory, the bicarb would be for every 10 PCO2 raised, there will be 3 uh, milli equivalents of bicarb. These are the arterial findings in the respiratory acidosis. And next, regarding the management in respiratory acidosis, primarily detecting this underlying disorder would be the requirement. And uh, we should be like uh, regarding the underlying management, most often likely it would be the bronchospasm or the lung involvement for which we would be giving the bronchodilators. And if it would be the drugs causing it, we should give the antidote for the sedative drugs causing the uh, problem. And uh, other caution would be that when a patient is in chronic hypercapnia, we should not do rapid correction because if there is rapid correction, there will be leading to metabolic alkalosis. And if there metabolic alkalosis is there, then it causes alkalization of CSF, the cerebrospinal fluid, because of which there can be problem of seizures. So this is the topic of the respiratory acidosis in short. Hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you.